Hello everybody. Welcome to today's mini lecture on mixture word problems. Mixture problems are another type of frequent word problems in algebra books. They are often formulated as mixes of acid solutions, but any situation where two objects are mixed together, each having a quantity and a concentration or percentage, can be treated this way. The simplest version goes as follows. 400 grams of a 40% acid solution and 200 grams of a 70% acid solution are mixed together into one container. How much acid solution do we get? And what is the concentration of this resulting acid solution? I think the first part of the question is easy to answer. Mass does not vanish, so the mass of the mix is the sum of the masses of the ingredients, so it is 400 plus 200 equals 600 grams. For the second part, let me ask you what you would guess. What do you think would be about the concentration of the mix? I hope none of you said 110%. First of all, 110% is impossible, and also the percentages do not add. I hope most of you gave an answer between 40% and 70% between the percentages of the ingredients. The percentage of the mix is always between the percentages of the ingredients. What if both ingredients would have the same mass, say 300 grams? Wouldn't then the percentage of the mix be just in the middle between these numbers? Wouldn't it be 55%, the mean of the two numbers, 40% and 70%? Yes, it would. Now, since the first ingredient has more mass than the second, it has more influence, more weight, so the percentage of the result would be a little closer to 40%. Did I hear 50% as a guess? Yes, that sounds reasonable. As a guess. We will do an exact calculation in a second. The trick for the exact calculation is to ask yourself how much acid is in each of the two containers you mix together. Since the first container contains 400 grams of a 40% solution, it contains 40% of 400 grams, 40% times 400 equals 0.4 times 400 equals 116 grams of pure acid, and the remaining 240 grams are just water. The second container contains 70% times 200 equals 0.7 times 200 equals 140 grams of pure acid, and of course 60% grams of water. The mix contains 600 grams, of concentration, say, P3. That means it contains P3 times 600 grams of pure acid. But since the pure acid is not spilled when pouring the two liquids together, nothing is lost or gained. This amount of pure acid must equal the sum of the amounts of pure acid in the two ingredients. Therefore, 160 plus 140 equals P3 times 600 or P3 equals 300 over 600, which is 0.5, 50%. The result is indeed 600 grams of a 50% acid solution. Let's now get a little more abstract. Assume that the masses of the two ingredients are M1 and M2, and the percentages of the two ingredients P1 and P2. As before, let M3 and P3 be the mass and the concentration of the resulting acid solution. How are these values related? Again, the masses add, so we have m1 plus m2 equals m3, our first equation. For the concentration, using the same argument as above, we know that the amount of pure acid in the two containers are p1 times m1, respectively p2 times m2, and the amount of pure acid in the resulting solution equals p3 times m3. Thus we get the acid solution P1 times M1 plus P2 times M2 equals P3 times M3, our second equation. Now please give me three and a half minutes to get a little deeper into this equation, will you? For the mechanics of how to solve such word problems, this is not really required. We'll continue the mechanics at 7.55. If we divide equation number 2 by M3, Substitute M3 by M1 plus M2 according to equation 1 and use commutative law, we get 
P3 equals M1 times P1 plus M2 times P2 divided by M1 plus M2, meaning that the resulting concentration P3 is a weighted average of the concentrations P1 and P2 of the ingredients. If M1 equals M2, P3 sits just in the middle between P1 and P2, otherwise it sits closer to the percentage belonging to the higher mass, the same result as our intuitive reasoning above. To be a little more precise, P3 minus P1 is equal to the expression for P3 minus P1 here, which can be simplified into this expression here by raising this P1 by M1 plus M2 and multiplying. And then we simplify and distribute and get M2 times P2 minus P1 divided by M1 plus M2. And in the same way, P3 minus P2 is equal to, well, after some calculation, M1 times P1 minus P2 divided by M1 plus M2. Therefore, the quotient of these expressions here, P3 minus P1 divided by P3 minus P2, equals, well, we plug the expressions in, we get a double compound fraction. Remember, dividing by a fraction means multiplying by its reciprocal. So we get M2 times P2 minus P1 times M1 plus M2, all divided by M1 times P1 minus P2 times M1 plus M2. And of course, we can cancel the M1 plus M2, and we can cancel the P2 minus P1 kind of. So we get negative M2 over M1. The ratio of the distances between P1 and P3, which is the absolute value of P3 minus P1, and between P2 and P3, which is the absolute value of P3 minus P2, equals the ratio M2 over M1 of the masses. In our example above, the resulting percentage, 0.5, 50%, is 0.1 away from 0.4 and 0.2 away from 0.7, so the distances to, to P1 and P2 behave like 1 to 2. The reason is that the masses of the ingredients behave like 2 to 1. To apply this to another example, what is the percentage when you pour together 30 grams of a 20% solution and 50 grams of a 40% solution? The masses behave like 3 to 5, so the distances of P3 to 20% and 40% must behave like 5 to 3. We cut the interval between 20% and 40% into 8 equal parts and get P3 must be 32.5%. Let's now return to our mixed job word problems where M1 mg of an acid solution of concentration P1 and M2 mg of an acid solution of concentration P2 are poured together to obtain M3 mg of an acid solution of concentration P3. In the first version we discussed, M1, M2, P1 and P2 were given, and M3 and P3 were unknown. They were our variables. In other variants, among the six quantities, M1, M2, M3, P1, P2, P3, just four of them are given, and the other two are unknown. They are the variables. In fact, if you start with any six valid values, like our 400, 200, 600 milligrams, and 40, 70, 60 percent, each such combination of hiding two of the six quantities and revealing the other four gives a possible version of a mixture problem. But we always have two equations, one and two above. Therefore, we always have two equations with two variables, which we can solve using substitution method. Let me just give one other example. How much of a 40% acid solution do you have to add to 300 mg of a 80% acid solution to get a 70% acid solution? The constants are M2 equals 300, P1 equals 0 0.4, P2 equals 0 0.8, P3 equals 0 0.7, and the variables are M1 and M3. We plug this into our two equations 1 and 2 and get M1 plus 300 equals M3, and 0.4 times M1 plus 0.8 times 300 equals 0.7 times M3. The first equation is already solved for M3, so we replace M3 in the second equation by M1 plus 300 to get one equation in one variable, 
0.4 times M1 plus 0.8 times 300 equals 0.7 times M1 plus 300 in parentheses. We multiply and distribute and get 0.4 times M1 plus 240 equals 0.7 times M1 plus 210. Then we collect like terms and get 30 equals 0.3 times M1, which has a solution of M1 equals 100. Again, you may have guessed this already using the trick I showed you in the three and a half minutes above. The distances of 0.7 to 0.4 and 0.8 are 0.3 and 0.1. Therefore, the masses must behave like 1 to 3, 100 mg to 300 mg. A final remark, also mixture problems in your textbook often use acid solutions, probably just to make it easier for you to recognize that it is a mixture problem. Many other things could be mixed. Examples are gold of different pureness, peanuts of different prices, and so on. Alright, thanks for listening.